rejoice and be glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Wherever you have created sanctuary, we welcome you into worship our risen Lord. I am Fanta Lansden, the associate pastor, and we thank you for joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live for this worship experience. We know and we believe that God is going to move in a powerful way because you will encounter the risen Lord in your home as you worship God. So we invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship with our opening prayer. Now we will begin this prayer with a time of pause, a time of pause to reflect, a time of pause to remember the lives of three persons. First, Brianna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, and George Floyd. And there are many more men and women who have died by police brutality. Portions of this morning prayer have been taken from the Black Lives Matter prayer by Rabbi Creditor, written in 2014. Please join me as we go to God in prayer. Oh, holy and merciful Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this day. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning, clothing us and giving us a portion of our right mind. God, we thank you. We thank you for how you move in us and how you call us to us and how you give us peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we thank you for this time of worship. And so we turn to you, oh God, in this country. We turn to you, oh God, so that we can breathe even more of your spirit into us because we find that we cannot breathe. The arms of armed forces are wrapped around kneeling at our necks when we call out for justice we call to you in defiance of a national system that betrays our noble ideals where tanks and blood fill our streets where every black man and woman and child is 20 times likelier to be arrested or killed by police we shout to the heavens with one united voice black lives matter we are called by for the day when we will beat swords into plowshares and study world war no more. When the surplus of war led by greed and deception will not spill into our streets. Where swords and tanks and rubber bullets and tear gas will be beaten thinner and thinner. The iron of hatred vanishes forever. We pray to you because as our prophets have taught us human suffering anywhere concerns men and women everywhere. So we call to you, O oh God, because your image was abandoned on the streets of Minneapolis when a brother was called out while under an officer's knee. I can't breathe. We call to you, O oh God, because your spirit was robbed from a daughter who was killed during a police raid in her Kentucky apartment. We call to you, O oh God, because your image was killed on the streets of Glen County, Georgia, when a son was jogging. Oh God, we call to you, O oh Lord, and we raise our hands to you, knowing that the work of is ours to do. Yes, it's ours to do, white and black and Jewish and Christian and Muslim, Hindu and atheist and young and old and gay and straight. The work is ours to do. These are your images battered by those sworn to protect and serve. We are all responsible for what happens next. And so we pray to you. You are the source of our life. God, you are our Lord. We raise our eyes to see you in each other's eyes and to take risks for justice. To bring through our unified prayer today more love and compassion into this world. Unite us to combat the hidden prejudice which causes police to open fire in fear which transforms a child in a hoodie into a hoodlum, a person into a threat. We pray today, not for calm, but for righteousness to flow down like a mighty river until peace fills the earth as the waters fill the sea. Comfort the families of all who grieve. Strengthen us to work for a world redeemer. 
today, God, we forever give your name all the praise and glory. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say amen. Amen and glory be to God. I want your heart. I want your heart. Nothing else matters, Lord. I want your Let's pray. Eternal God, recognizing that unless we have a clear and clean heart, we can't worship you. So we confess in the words of Psalm 51, give us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Thank you, our Creator, for giving us this day and this opportunity to worship you. We invoke not just your presence, God, but we ask now for your power to preach your word. Speak now that your servants may hear, move in a way and that we all change by the Holy Spirit. And God, empower us, we pray, with a new heart to be a better believer. Empower us, we pray, with the right heart to be a better witness. Empower us, we pray, with a clean heart that we will live righteous. We ask this prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let all who believe say, Amen. This Sunday, the last Sunday of the month of May, but the first Sunday as we celebrate Pentecost, the birth of the church, we 
invite you to turn in your device, in your Bibles, to Acts chapter 2, uh, reading today from verses 1 through 21 from a New Living Translation, Acts chapter 2. This is the story of the birth of the church, or as we say in church world, Pentecost. Let us hear the word of Almighty God. For on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And every one present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee. And yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Serene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And this morning, I invite you to turn with me in your word to verse 2 of Acts chapter 2 as it serves as our sermonic text for preaching and teaching. And the word tells us this. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Suddenly. There was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. With the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement, I want to lift up today this text and preach from our subject, A Spirit-Filled House. A Spirit-Filled House. Friends, this week, this month, this year, and this new decade will go down in infamy. 
Let me say that again. This week, this month, this year, this new decade will go down in infamy. And please know that I'm talking about an event infamy that is that becomes famous for something considered bad. Infamy is an evil reputation brought about by something grossly criminal, shocking, or brutal. Infamy is public reproach or strong condemnation as a result of a shameful criminal or outrageous act. This week, y'all, this month, church, this year and this new decade, my friends, will go down in infamy. For it will be remembered not necessarily for the discoveries that were made in the positive results for a vaccine for COVID-19 coronavirus. It will not be remembered, my friends, for the positive virtual graduation celebration of students around the world and their achievement that was aired on television a few weeks ago. That event produced by LeBron James with a featured address from President Barack Obama was a superb tribute to all students of all ages and their families, for it will not be remembered for the Tony Award winner Audrey McDonald hosting a Night of Covenant House Stars. Audrey McDonald went and was there to a benefit concert starring Merle Streep's Dolly Parton, Diane Keaton, Bon Jovi, Stephen Colbert, and Dion Warwick, raising monies to benefit Covenant House, Covenant House that provides housing and supportive services for youth facing homelessness, Covenant House that has a mantra that says we will help people transform their lives and put them on a path to independence for this week this month this year this decade will not be remembered y'all for the 22 nursing home employees who spent 65 days living in the offices sleeping in break rooms being away from family y'all for 65 days while taking care of residents of the Sharon Brook nursing home in Newark Ohio staying with these residents since March 12th to make sure that the coronavirus did not come from the outside and affect those residents on the inside. This week, this month, this year, this new decade will not be remembered, y'all, for the positive attributes and accolades that should have been history makers and banner wavers for most in America. But instead, this week, this month, this year, this new decade will go down in infamy. Infamy because close to a half a million lives worldwide and now 100,000 plus lives in the United States have been lost to the coronavirus. This week will go down in infamy because of the hurt we experience and because of the pain what that was inflicted and because of the violence that was perpetrated and because of the sin that was committed, committed by some individuals who forgot about social distancing and knowingly but unwillingly infected other people at pool parties and drag races and other events that will eventually mean other folk will be sick. This week, this month, this year, this new decade, y'all will go down in infamy. Down in infamy because of the open murder case of Ahmaud Arbery in Brunswick, Georgia. It will go down in infamy because of the unlawful killing of Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. It will go down in infamy because of the protest rallies and the confrontations, the riots and the looting across America, all brought on by the sinful, cold-blooded lynching of George Floyd and 
Minneapolis, Minnesota. And this will go down in infamy. And because this week, this month, this new decade will go down in infamy, it's, it's there that many are saying, is there a word from the Lord? It's at this juncture that we're asking, is there any news from those pushing their way living in the wilderness? It is now a question for all of God's children, black, white, uh, Latino, and, and Asian, all of God's children made in the image of almighty God. We are saying, is there a bomb in Gilead? And on this Pentecost Sunday, I, I believe there is a word and I call it to your attention for the Bible says when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly they, there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind and it filled the house where they were City. Now, I believe there's a word from Almighty God, and that word says that, that you can make it if you are part of a spirit-filled house. A spirit-filled house where God is omnipresent. A spirit-filled house where God is omnipotent. A spirit-filled house where we know that God is omniscient, knowing everything about our goings and our comings. I believe there's a word from the Lord when we are part of a spirit-filled house. For you see, my friends, when we open up this text, we cannot help but open up the entire Bible and to see how God works in mysterious ways and how God performs miracles even in situations where there is a mess. It happens in a spirit-filled house. Throughout the scriptures, don't miss this because God reveals God's self in Theophanies. Genesis 3, 8 says God walked in the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. In Exodus 3, 2, it says God appeared as a burning bush to Moses on Mount Sinai. In 2 Chronicles 5, it says, uh, the Bible says the glory filled the temple. And in Exodus, Ezekiel 10, it says the glory exited the temple. God, y'all, shows up and reveal God's self in theophanies. And it is that when the Holy Spirit came on that appointed time, the Holy Spirit filled the whole house for those who were believers. You see what I'm saying at this juncture of the sermon church is that is that God omnipresent does not suggest that God's presence is static. There's no reason for us to get despondent or even to feel discouraged, even in the midst of the trauma that we've experienced this week, because I stand as a believer and I stand as one with wavering my thoughts that God is still in charge. And I want you to know this day, right where you sit, wherever you're sitting in or whatever's around you, God is still in charge. For you see, just looking back over our lives, we cannot help but to take a check up from the neck up, knowing that God, through Jesus, who has done some dynamic things in your life, is still in charge. I think you ought to give somebody an amen high five right where you are or give a hallelujah emoji in the chat box right now because God is still in. Somebody knows that God has done some dynamic things in your life. God God has changed some darkness in the day. God has lifted your spirits when they were down. God has given you hope in your hopelessness. God has given you an answer for your question. God has come through in your midnight. That's a dynamic charge. You see what I'm saying, y'all, as we celebrate Pentecost today, through God, God through Jesus is the only source to which we have a bomb in Gilead. God through Jesus gives us strength for the battle against false teachings. God through Jesus, who is the only directive that will lead us closer to our divine purpose. It is God through Jesus Christ who puts us closer to the real and farther away from the false. What's good to know about a spirit-filled house, y'all, it leads us to a relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus Christ, our Comforter. Jesus Christ, our Battle Axe. Jesus Christ, our way over troubled waters. Come on, you know what it is. Jesus Christ in your life. 
is the one that fills your house with the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying, y'all, here is that God is always on the move. The psalmist says that, that, that wherever I go, the spirit of God meets me there. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths of the earth, you are there. If I rise on the rings with the dawn of the morning and settle on the far side of the sea, the word says the hand of God will guide me. You, you see the incarnation of the holy word of God exemplifies God's presence and it's not confined just to the body of Christ but it's lived out in the Holy Spirit. And I want us to recognize that Pentecost, Pentecost helps us see the presence of God. That is, God is well able to bring about God's plan to pass. It helps us see the purpose of God. The intentions of God will never distract from the plan of Almighty God. I got to say that again. The purpose of God means that the intentions of God will never distract from the plan of God. By ascending into heaven, Jesus told his disciples, I'm sending forth a promise from my father, a promise from my father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. The disciples, y'all, gather in the anticipation in the upper room, and the Bible says again, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were obedient to pray and obedient to stay. I've got to say it again. They were obedient to pray and obedient to stay. You missed your shout. They were obedient to pray. God is saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and Pray and turn from their wicked ways. I will heal the land. God says if my people who I have redeemed and my people who I have saved and my people who I've made a way out of no way. Somebody needs to hear what I'm saying. It's, it is time to hit the streets, but it's time to hit your knees. It is time to speak up, but it's time to pray up. It is time to stand up, but it's also time to bend down and say, Father in heaven, not my will but let thy will be done. When the day of Pentecost had come, the people were praying and they were staying, staying, staying fast, staying in obedience, staying in their faith, staying around those that they could build them up and not tear them down. When the day of Pentecost came, oh, I like it. It was like a violent rushing wind that Filled the whole house where they were sitting. And the word tells us, y'all, that the disciples gathered in one place in the upper room in Jerusalem. The Spirit came at the appointed time of the day of Pentecost. And as the Holy Spirit came, it filled the house. Fill the house, fill the house. Don't miss this, y'all. In that place at the proper time, the omnipresence Holy Spirit filled the house. But as it filled the house, it then filled each believer. Oh, recognize this, y'all, is that if you want to walk in the power and the presence of Almighty God, you have to be around the power and the presence of Almighty God. If you want to speak with the power and the presence of Almighty God, you need to be close to the power and the presence of Almighty God. It was because the Spirit of God came into the house, then the eyes of those believers were open because of the Spirit of God came into the house. You see, God lo localized presence transformed common space and time into sacred space and time. God came in to a regular place and made it supernatural. God came into a common place and made it extraordinary. God came into some people who were given up on life and gave them eternal life. God came into a situation where people are ready to run and hide and God told them with me 
in the Holy Spirit you shall live. The good news, y'all, is that the presence of God, the very usha substance of God, teaches that rest upon in a filled space and time. Somebody needs to hear this word today because we do experience a sense of hurt. We do experience a sense of loss. We do experience a sense of lack. But I want you to know by the Holy Spirit, God is filling that space. By the Holy Spirit, God is giving you time. And by the Holy Spirit, God will fill your house. Let me move quickly because I don't want you to forget the significance of Pentecost. Pentecost is considered to be the birth of the church. Pentecost, it was that day that the church became alive. Up until this moment, there was no such thing as the church. But on the day of Pentecost, 120 individuals, men it says, were in the upper room. 120 is significant because that means there is a, a body, a legalized body to have worship and prayer. 120 it's not just a multiple of 12 times 10. It is a significant number because it means that God in an organized fashion came into a space and did is something extraordinary. What you're saying, preacher, I'm saying is that God has the same power and God has the same strength and God has the same anointing and God has the same transformation. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, y'all, it made the upper room a room a holy place and it made the disciples in the hope upper room holy people. The Holy Spirit, y'all, that made the place holy and the people anointed. You see, what happens in the church, y'all, is we want to have church in a space that ain't anointed, and we want to have church with people who don't know the Lord. Say, ouch, if I stepped on your toes, and I'm going to walk a little bit harder. Again, the church of Jesus Christ cannot be built upon a building so we can have fish fries and chicken dinners and car washes and Tom Thumb weddings and calendar tea. That ain't the church. That's why the people in the street were mad because the church was not in the street. But when the church gets to the street, we don't have to worry about fish fries and chicken dinners and Tom Thumb's wedding and teas. We can do the work of when the people understand that the building must become holy, the ground must become holy, the sanctuary must become holy, then the people can become holy. As believers gathered in places of worship, Jesus told the disciples, you go and you wait. You stay and you pray. And when you stay and you pray, your house will be filled of the Holy Spirit. Stay on your knees and stay in the word and stay around individuals who believe that God can do anything but fail. Cut the television off. I told you before, it's the same news looped over every 25 minutes with 18 commercials in in the middle stay in the word of almighty God because it is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path the day of Pentecost y'all is about the Holy Spirit coming to stay as you pray let me help you understand this because one of the one of the ills that we experienced this week in the protests is that some folk were marching and they didn't know what the end result of the march would be. I cannot help but to go back to the letter from the Birmingham jail written by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who was on the front lines, who was called an outside agitator, but he had to address preachers who wrote these eight preachers wrote a letter to him asking why was he there. Dr. King, y'all, from the letter to the Birmingham jail says that we have to be there in the streets, be it from Minneapolis, be it from Oakland, be it from Pittsburgh, be it from New York, and be it right here in Charlotte because when we are in the streets, it means we want to end all forms of segregation and help those with a civil rights movement. Letter from the Birmingham jail, it was talking about promoting in the urgent need for the biblical soundness of non-violent, again, non-violent protests. When you recognize a letter from the Birmingham jail, you've got to speak to the injustices committed in one place. Is injustice committed everywhere? 
injustice committed in Minneapolis is the same injustice committed in Kannapolis. The injustice committed, y'all, in Miami is the same injustice committed in Michigan. The injustice committed, y'all, in Charlottesville is the same injustice that's committed in Charlotte. You've got to recognize, you've got to stand up for a reason and stand up for a purpose. But here is the one that you probably know that the reason that the letter to the, from the Birmingham jail was so powerful was not because Dr. King said it, but because the world began to stand up to say injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. You see, a spirit-filled house helps us realize we've got to put on some boots and start to march. And a spirit-filled house helps us realize we've got to have some signs to say not only the black lives matter, but the life that we walk past and we see every day, that life matters. The spirit of the Holy Ghost helps us realize that on the Feast of Pentecost, a time when people were together, the Bible says to, to celebrate a feast. That's the perfect time to talk about the transformation power of Almighty God. You see, what I want you to recognize that this spirit of Pentecost, these 50 days after the Passover, when everybody brought their first fruits to harvest, to be enjoyed, that's when the Lord shows up. The Lord showed up, y'all, at a time when people were having barbecues and cookouts, having fish fries and, and block parties. The, the, the time when, when you were celebrating, that's when God wants to celebrate in your life. Don't miss this, y'all, because the text helps us understand that as the Holy Spirit came upon them, the Bible says the Holy Spirit as a person, the distinct one from the Father above the promised Holy Spirit, it came upon those who were praying and staying, and the power of the Holy Spirit gave them something to do. It gave them something to say. It gave them something to become. Recognize when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it does not matter your title or your position or your money or your lack thereof. The Holy Spirit will cause you to do something. Got to give a shout out, y'all to actor Denzel Washington. Don't know if you know the story, but Denzel Washington found himself, y'all, beginning, beginning uh, to act by the Holy Spirit. The story was in West Hollywood as Denzel Washington was walked, was passing by, he saw a man on the street beginning to have a confrontation with a police officer out of his car. Denzel, the actor Denzel, the, 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 the performer Denzel, the, the one from, you know, Alonzo from Training Day, Denzel who acted as a crooked cop, recognized I cannot act as a crooked cop. I got to act as a responsible citizen. And Denzel found himself, y'all, coming in between the homeless man and the police officer de-escalating the movement, y'all, like many of us need to de-escalate some movements in our own lives, and Denzel, by the Holy Spirit, stand up and made sure that that was not a bad situation in West Hollywood. What you saying, Reverend? I'm saying that the Bible teaches us when we have the Holy Spirit, we will stand up for what is right. What you saying, Reverend? Because the Bible says that on the day of the Holy Spirit, they were filled and began and speaking in other languages. You see, there's characteristics of the Holy Spirit I don't want you to miss. And first of all, I've been trying to drive it home, is praying and staying. Praying and staying is like praying and waiting. The characteristics of the Holy Spirit means is that when you are in tune with Almighty God, you will spend more time in prayer. But as you spend more time in prayer, you will find yourself wanting to do something with what God has empowered you with, which is the second point of the Holy Spirit. It evangelizes to praising, evangelizes. It leads you to a moment to move from your blessed assurances and do something. The Holy Spirit moves you in a direction that you will not just talk about it, you will now 
be about it. But, but because some of you may have been hung up that the Holy Spirit that is only comes to give you the gift of speaking in tongues. Look what the word says because in verse 4 it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages. This is not the, 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 the glossia that, that Paul talked about. It's really about the language of communication, the language Language of evangelism. It is about a different understanding when we speak the language. Why was it important for the Holy Spirit to give us the gift of speaking in languages? It goes back to the Great Commission. We are to go into all parts of the earth, go into all sections of the world, go into all communities that are hurting and speak the language that they understand. That is why the church needs to get into the street to speak the language language. That is why the church need to be moved to do greater things to speak the language. I like the language that former Vice President Joe Biden says. He says we are a nation in pain but we must not allow the pain to destroy us. We are, he says, a nation in gay, in rage, but we cannot allow our rage to consume us. We are a nation exhausted, but we will not allow our exhaustion to defeat us. You've got to speak the the language and when you speak the language you will begin to uh, to evangelize but but again again some people ain't gonna like it when you start speaking the language that's what happened when you look at the text y'all the text tells us in in verse 12 they stood amazed and perplexed what can this mean some of the crowd ridiculed them they're junk they're drunk that's what it is. But old big mouth Peter, bless his heart, he stood up and he defended what was going on. And Peter says, here it is. They're not drunk as you assume. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know who that word is for, but I think you need to get a warning. Don't get drunk at nine o'clock in the morning because that ain't God-like. But why were they saying they were drunk? Well, here's the shout right here, y'all. When the Holy Spirit came upon the people of God, they began to speak in languages, proclaiming the goodness of Almighty God. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to lift up the wonders of Almighty God. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to remember where God had brought them from. They began to stand on the promises of the Holy Word. They began to lift up heads in praise. And the people, y'all, they saw that excitement. The people, y'all, they saw that joy. The people, y'all, they saw that encouragement and they assumed that they was drunk. Why did they assume that they were drunk? Well, usually drunk people do have a sense of joy about themselves. Drunk people sometimes do have a sense of, of laughter about themselves. Some drunk people sometimes do exhibit, not all, but do exhibit a sense of it's going to be all right. And so that's why they assume. But I want to correct the assumption. These folk were not drunk with wine, as Peter says. They were drunk and filled of the Holy Spirit. And here's what the shout is. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, you will have joy in your heart. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, you will stand on the word. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, you can walk to people who can't walk and say, brother, sister, can I help you get something? When you're full of the Holy Spirit, you will stand on the truth. My friends, I employ upon you to have a spirit-filled house, a spirit-filled house that starts with praying and staying. A spirit-filled house that causes us to speak a language of love and a language of inclusion and a language of acceptance and a language that whosoever will, we love them the name of Almighty God. Don't be so concerned about tearing down and destroying. It's time to build up. Don't be so concerned about burning. It's time to burn with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I want to speak particularly now to to, 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 to my young brothers and sisters who are on the street. I want to speak particular to those who, who feel that the cause is not one worth living for, but I 
want you to know as I approach 60, you got to keep your faith in Almighty God. As I get closer to, to the moment when I recognize that my days in front may not be as great as my days behind, I want you to know that, that we're going to get through this thing together. I want you to know that, that we didn't come this far by ourselves. We, we got our anchor in the Lord. I want to speak to somebody this day who is suffering with the coronavirus. I want you to know that there was a Christ before there was a corona. And I want you to know there is healing in the balm of Gilead. I, I want you to stand on God's word today and don't waver. I want you to stay in the word of truth and the word of deliverance because we need the word. We need one another to survive. I pray this morning that somehow, some way that we will listen to this word and replay this word back and just focus on what does it mean to have the Holy Spirit. And I invite that Holy Spirit to come into your life, into your heart, and begin to make some changes. Glory, great things God has done. We praise God for you. Thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience. We'd like to thank all of those who've been chatting in the chat box. Be sure, if you can, uh, share this message with others and your uh, network. Thanks to Pastor Lanson and Dr. Carroll for being our virtual pastors on Facebook and YouTube. We thank God for our musicians. We thank God for our technicians. We thank God for the prayer warriors that pray every day that God's will is done. If you have made a decision that you want to be a part of community faith and you've selected C and Jenkins as that place, please don't hesitate to give us a call, email us, let us know your decision. We want to be a part of your life and your spiritual growth. Don't forget to join us every, every morning, Monday through Friday, for our prayer call. Join us uh, this afternoon for our youth-led worship, also for our children's worship. All of that is found on the website. Again, thanks to all of our staff, all of our volunteers, to our floor manager here. We thank God for you. Praise God for the production of this service, knowing that God is able to do extraordinary things in a spirit-filled house. In the words of our Savior, in the words of our Lord, may the peace of God be with you this day and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Have a wonderful day. I love you. God bless you. We'll see you next week.